What is up guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about K-Swap fuel systems. And even though there's a lot of off-the-shelf options here from K-Tuned, Hybrid Racing, I think it's still really important to understand how this stuff works. And also, maybe you want to design and build your own fuel system to save a little money or just because you have a car that's not supported by the aftermarket. Now, if you've been researching K-Swap fuel systems, K-Swaps in general, or you're new to the whole thing, one thing that's definitely true about the K-Swap world is fuel systems are a hot topic. And that's mainly because a lot of the cars we want to swap our K-Series engines into are not returnless systems. So let's talk about what a returnless system is. A returnless system is what the RSX, the TSX, the K-Series Civics, etc. have. And what that is is basically you have a single line running from the gas tank all the way up to your fuel rail. And your gas tank internally determines the pressure of the system. However, on our older cars, we have a return style system. So how that works is you have a feed line running up from the gas tank, and on our Honda, older Honda specifically, we have that fuel filter on the firewall, especially EG, EK, DC2. You have a fuel pressure regulator on the fuel rail, and that allows the system to bleed off any excess fuel back to the gas tank. So the fuel pressure regulator essentially has a set fuel pressure, and when the system exceeds that fuel pressure, it just returns the excess gas back to the tank. So the fuel pressure regulator is the key here. And luckily for us, there's lots of aftermarket fuel pressure regulators available, from Aeromotive, K-Tuned has a really nice one, Hybrid Racing, etc. There's tons. The one we need to use, though, is called a bypass return style because there's a few different styles. And how that works is you have a feed in where fuel can flow into the fuel pressure regulator. You also have a feed out where fuel can flow out. And this is actually an optional port. We'll talk about that a bit later. You have a return, which returns the fuel back to the gas tank if the pressure in the system exceeds the set fuel pressure. You have your adjustment screw in order to set the fuel pressure. You also have a vacuum port. The vacuum port, is, I don't want to say it's optional, but in a way it is. Keep in mind, your system's under higher vacuum, you'll have lower fuel pressure. And with lower vacuum is higher fuel pressure. So this is actually very helpful because you're let's say you're under full throttle and in your, if you're in a boosted application, your manifold is going to be pressurized. If you're in an NA application, you're just going to have very low vacuum. So it is going to be higher pressure than at idle or decel or cruise. And the fuel injectors have to work a lot harder to push that fuel into the manifold. So if you hook up this vacuum line, that means that at, in these lower vacuums or under boost scenarios, you're going to have higher fuel pressure, which makes it a little easier for the fuel injectors to push that fuel in. Now, another solution is, let's say you don't hook this vacuum line up, your tuner can just add some extra fuel when the engine's under load to overcome the fuel pressure not increasing. So keep in mind, there's not really a downside to hooking this up. On a lot of just lower power NA setups, it's not really necessary. You can overcome it easily in the tune, but under high horsepower, boosted applications, usually you'll want to hook this up. Lastly, there's usually a port on the front of most fuel pressure regulators to hook up a fuel pressure gauge, which is usually completely optional. And that's a fuel pressure regulator. There's a lot of options on this little thing, but in the end, it's a pretty simple system. Hopefully this simplifies it a little bit for you guys. So let's talk about how we can incorporate this fuel pressure regulator into our K-Swap car in order to use the factory K-Series fuel rail. So here's our first setup. This is kind of like a budget setup. We have the K-Series fuel rail, and we're using the K-Series in a factory return style system. So this will be an EG EK DC2. So let's say you swap a K24, K20 into your older Honda, EG EK DC2 CRX, etc. And that's a return style system. So you can introduce an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator in order to bleed off the excess fuel, return it to the gas tank. And you can even utilize your stock filter on the firewall. So you would have a line running 
from the filter to the fuel pressure regulator, you would have the line running from the fuel pressure regulator to the fuel rail, and then you can use the return line on the fuel pressure regulator to feed it back to the gas tank. This is also how the K-Tune center feed fuel system works. Specifically, that's what I put on my Civic. It's very similar, except for it uses the aftermarket K-Tune fuel rail and an aftermarket filter just to kind of clean up the whole system and provide more of a tucked look. Now, keep in mind, there are some downsides to this setup. Mainly because the fuel pressure regulator is before the fuel rail. So as you can see, the fuel pressure regulator is going to fill up your fuel rail with fuel if the fuel rail does not have enough pressure in it. So basically, let's say you have your fuel pressure set to 50 PSI. That's what K-Tune recommends as like base for a K-Swap. You have it set to 50 PSI, your fuel rail is empty, so the fuel pressure regulator is going to fill it up until it reaches 50 PSI. So let's say it's filled up. Then your injectors fire, your fuel rail is now empty. So the fuel pressure regulator has to fill it back up when it detects the pressure drop. So this is a little inefficient because the fuel rail isn't always full and there's a limitation to this setup. At about 300 horsepower, this starts to become an issue. That's at least what K-Tune recommends on their site. I'm sure there might be some people who have pushed it further. You know, there's always that guy who, who pushed it to 400, 500 horsepower. But let's just say that this is not the most efficient setup, but it is fine for a mostly stock engine and low powered builds. The most efficient setup is this. You have the feed line running straight to your fuel rail. You should have a filter in between just to make sure there's no impurities getting into your fuel rail, your fuel injectors, etc. And then you have the fuel pressure regulator after the fuel rail in the system. And remember how I said before, you can plug that feed out port on the fuel pressure regulator. In this system, that will be plugged and you would only have two ports hooked up on your fuel pressure regulator. You would have fuel feeding in from the fuel rail and then you would have re fuel returned to the gas tank. So in this system, the fuel rail is always full because your fuel, fuel pump is always pumping the fuel through your feed line. And then the fuel pressure regulator is just after the fuel rail, bleeding off that excess fuel, maintaining a steady pressure in your system. So this is definitely the recommended approach for high horsepower builds, and I would say any build in general. The only reason to use the previous approach might be if you only want to have one line running to your fuel rail just to clean up your engine bay or something like that. Maybe you want to think it's simpler. So those are pretty much the main setups. There might be some other ways to do things, but those are pretty much the main setups you would see on these K-Swap cars. Now there's some other considerations. Let's talk about E85, because I think that's a major consideration if you're building a fuel system or if you plan to run E85 in your K-Swap car. There's two things to keep in mind with E85. One, you're gonna need 30 to 40% more fuel with E85. That means bigger injectors, bigger, more powerful fuel pump, and possibly even bigger lines. So the stock Civic feed line is 5 16 You might need to have 3 eighths or even bigger with E85 if you have a really high horsepower build. Here's a quick diagram from Summit where they explain based on horsepower what your feed line should be. And as you increase your feed line, you should probably increase your return line. Your return line obviously doesn't have to be as big as the feed. For example, if you have a dash six AN feed, you probably only need a dash four AN return because it's not as pressurized. The other consideration, E85 is more corrosive so a lot, some people say that they've gotten away with running 85 with their factory rubber lines or with rubber lines in general. Other people say it doesn't work. I'm sure there's all types of arguments on the internet about that. But one thing is certain that E85 is more corrosive. So if you're going to run AN lines, which is what I would recommend, or just hard lines in general, then you would want to make sure you go with PTFE AN lines. Those have a PTFE liner in them that resists the corrosion. Since we're talking about AN lines, there's one other thing to consider. With AN lines, you want to make sure you get high flow fittings. There is a difference. There's regular fittings and there's high flow fittings. Here is a quick image from Vibrant site. As you can see, they have the high flow fittings listed. And there's also a visible difference between high flow and regular fittings. The high flow is obviously more bulky to flow the extra fuel.
And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. I hope it simplified the fuel system talk. Hopefully it's helped understand fuel pressure regulators, all that stuff. And next week, I'm going to continue the fuel system talk, and I want to do full parts lists for a few of these setups that I explained today and provide spreadsheets, all that stuff. So if you're interested in building your own fuel system, stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel and let me know if this was helpful down in the comments. See you guys later.